Do you know where the passion for fashion came from? I don't, I don't know. I think... Ken, is there a moment where you can recall kind of... I mean, you know, I used to tra change for every occasion. If I was, if I, it was, as a kid, if I was like, if I was climbing up a tree, I'd have to have a special climbing tree outfit on. Or if I was going to go around my friend's house and play with Sylvania or families, I'd have to change. It, there was about five changes a day to make myself feel like, or if I was going on a walk or a bike ride, it was changes. I don't know. I mean, I, my mum used to drag me around charity shops and jumble sales, and I used to go and collecting for jumble sales and just rummage. And that was the only reason that I would go and collect for jumble sales is because I got first dibs on stuff. So I'd go and rummage through other people's stuff. I mean, I don't know. I think it's. I, don't, I mean, I just. I've always. Always, always love fashion. I don't know where it's come from or who I got it from. Maybe it's my my glamorous um, great aunt who was TV Weezy's private secretary. She was an amazing, amazing woman. I've got her furs and stuff, <laughs> all kept in nice in their bags. But I think she, I mean, she died when I was quite young. But she was always so, so glamorous, and her apartment was so glamorous. But yeah, maybe it's her. Did you always know that you wanted to be a filmmaker? Mm -mm. No, I've always wanted to be a fashion photographer. Since about the age of 13, that's all I really wanted to do. Can you remember what actually triggered that off for you? Um, I mean, it's a sort of the, the normal tragic story of being really crap at school. And then my dad gave me a camera um, when I was about 12 and just made everything really made sense when I looked through the viewfinder and spent all my weekends with my very very gorgeous friends taking pictures of them in their mum's sort of vintage 70s jeans I lived in a I lived in the countryside in Cambridgeshire and it's really some of it barren but some of it beautiful and sunsets so I just had fun I just that's all I wanted to do so yeah photography photography first what was it that actually turned you on to filmmaking um, when I was assisting Nick, um, he did a project called Editing Fashion and I had, and for some reason, we decided to do a really, really long process of him um, going through the hours and hours and hours of footage he had and I didn't know, didn't know editing really existed and I had to sit next to him writing the time codes down of the in and out and then of his chosen bits of the footage then went to all the other editors but I had the job of writing the time codes down and then spending days and nights transferring all the footage and some material to send out to everyone. But it was sort of watching that footage made and sitting next to Nick and sort of shyly asking questions about it, I think sort of opened my mind to what fashion would mean in film. It just made me feel really, really excited. You're one of the first filmmakers that's really specialising in fashion filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if during the time you've been doing that, you've, you know, can you comment on the way that the industry has started I mean, to perceive it? Yeah, I mean, I think people are getting really excited and really excited about, you know, it's such a strong communication. And I think that there are so many pros, you know, when you get it right, it's really exciting medium to be in. And of course, the internet and everything's moving, billboards, shops, you know, I think people are just really. I don't, I don't, I think, you know, fashion film's been going longer than Nick, you know, all the, all the stuff that you've got on site, um, is it Guy Bourdain, the stuff that you've mm. got on? You know, he just didn't have the platform, but he was doing it, so it's always been there, it's just that I'm really lucky that I live in an age where technology, iPads, the internet, everything's sort of geared up for it, so I think it's not, people aren't necessarily, people are understanding fashion film, and people are really excited about it, but it's also that there's that there's platforms there for everybody. I think that's a, that's the biggest part of it. I think. I'm wondering if you could talk us through the process of creating a fashion film. Each one is different because each each time you know you collaborate with somebody different, whether it's an art director or you know whoever is involved in the films. Um, but the Gareth ones I can talk about because that's what mm. I've done the most. Um, mm. It starts off with an idea, <coughs> excuse me, an idea and a concept, um, and pictures and fabrics, um, and then there's and there's the shoot, which I have pictures up all around the shoot, whether it's paintings, 
mainly paintings with Gareth, um, and or architecture is, is and or sculpture is a very big part of Gareth's references. So those pictures come with me to the studio, um, and then in the studio those pictures then come home with me, and I have them all the way around my living room, my my office. Sorry, um, and then I take a still from each each section, each everything I shoot, no matter whether I think it's good or bad, if I'm going to use it or not, I take a still from it, not necessarily the best still, but a still, and then I have that up around my wall. Um, the first two days, I watch the footage back. Always, I just sit there watching, maybe making notes. I watch with the music on my headphones, but I just watch sort of develop ideas, um, talk things through with Gareth quite a lot. I'll ring him halfway through watching it and say, this bit's great, and get excited about it, this bit's not so great. Um, I'm thinking I might not use this bit or I'm gonna use it in that way. So then I work, I just, I start with the beginning. I mean, each film's difficult and it also depends on the pace of the music. The spring, summer one, um, I remember I, I wanted to keep the mirror section for the end, I thought, well, I really, really like that. I want to keep that for my end. But then the music was really, really stark in the middle of it. But yeah, the music led me to put that bit there. So it all changes. And then Gareth comes to mine a lot and he sees things and what the hell are you doing? That looks terrible. Or he'll see it and then three days later, he'll come back and say, well, actually, I've been thinking about this quite a lot and I've not been able to sleep because I really don't like this bit. So can we change it? And We'll sit there and we'll grade stuff together. So Gareth's really, really with me, really, really with me when we're doing it, which is incredible to see everything through his eyes. It's great. Um, so yeah, and then I, I can't. It's sort of like a computer. It's like an addiction. I can't. I can't go to sleep or go to the shop or make myself a nice dinner or anything. It's sort of like. I look like a sweaty little gremlin sitting at my computer and can't really leave it alone until it's ripped out of my hands. We've talked a lot about Gareth. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, and you've worked a great deal with Gareth. How did that collaboration actually first come about? Um, he, he was doing um, a shoot with Nick for days when I was still mm. assisting Nick. And at that point I was um, filming whilst Nick was shooting and I made a film from made a film from that shoot and I think he saw that film and really really understood what what the power could be and then we got together after that I think the week I left assisting Nick we shot the first film together so it was I think I think he saw that first film from the dazed um, editorial and just really understood what what the power could be and what what he could do with it so yeah think from that first moment. Where do the ideas come from? Is it that Gareth will approach you to do a film or that you will suggest something to Gareth? It's always his choice to do a film. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, whether he does a film for his show or not is completely whether whether he feels it's right for that season or not. But So he'll always say, Ruth, come on, we're going to do a film. Or he'll say, um, he's doing a show. But he... So it, everything starts from his design. The every, every you know the fabrics, the colours or the not colours. You know what his inspirations were for the show. So it's not. And then I sort of chip in and sort of develop it and sort of make it grow. So he he's sort of the base, and then I, we together we make it grow into something else. But it always starts from you know his design always. Mm -hmm. Because I think another important thing to say is really, especially with that first film that you did for him, that was part of a huge sea change, I think, in the way a lot of people actually looked at, at fashion film and at the possibilities of film replacing a catwalk show. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think, I think you have to be really careful about, I don't know why everyone needs to define it so sort of like, it's going to replace, it's not going to, mm. it's, it's, it doesn't need to be that refined or that, clear you know I think Gareth makes clothes that are incredible to film and the lines dimensions all the things that you just said you know 
incredible for me to be able to work with because they, they just I don't need anything I, do, I have it all in front of me I don't mm. need anything else he's made this huge dress that blows up three times bigger than the model I don't you know I, I need to light it properly and I need to edit it properly but I don't it doesn't need anything else and I think that Gareth really really works really well on the screen um, but I, d I don't think that it needs to be it needs to replace or it doesn't need to replace I mean, I, I've, only, I've not been to many shows in my life, but when I go, it's just like, I love going, I absolutely love going to um, the theatre and I love seeing shows. It makes my heart race. And, you know, I wouldn't want to say that what I do would replace that for anyone because I, I love going to see a show. And when, and when a girl walks down and the music's pumping and she's really, really powerful and strong and the, the fabric, I was really lucky to go and see... Um, a Dior show and just the, the clothes just like hovered around her just effortlessly you couldn't see where it was touching her and I was so excited to see that that I wouldn't I wouldn't want that to be taken away from anyone but I do think that Gareth Gareth makes amazing amazing designs to be shown on film so I think it I think there's room for both and I don't think there needs to be so many opinions and rules about it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And you don't make a, you don't make a film that's something that doesn't lend itself well to film. You've got to make it. You've got to be led by the clothes. What do you think makes a good fashion film? Uh, good clothes. <laughs> it's, I mean, you know, if yeah, the design and the clothes and the model and the music, you know, all the all the things that would make a really great photograph make a really amazing film. Um, I think if you start if you start with something exquisite, you're gonna you're more likely to end up with something really good at the end of it. I know that's a stupid and obvious thing to say, but um, I think the the most important thing about fashion film is the fashion mm. and the understanding of that. Do you think it has to be the fashion that's driving it? Yeah. I, I think you can't, per, personally, I wouldn't ever want to, couldn't ever come up with an idea without seeing the subject and the subject of the clothes and the woman, the clothes lead to the woman. It will start and the, and the choice of music and, you know, the choice of the pace of the film or how fast or slow the film's cut, everything, it all has to start from the fashion. I'm interested in your point of view as to why fashion has suddenly become so interested in film and in the internet. Well, I think that I think that it's been so long in in a certain way, you know, a, fo you know, a show to an editorial to I'm not sorry to advertising to editorial. You know, I think it, I think it's just a, a new way to communicate for everybody, and everyone wants to make it work and and see see how to make something really brilliant from it. It's just another facet to what people are doing already. I think that's, you know, that's why people want to do film, because there is the internet and it's so far reaching. You know, anyone can, that's got a connection or can go to an internet cafe can be communicated to. I just think it's so far reaching. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't the fashion industry want to use the internet and want to communicate in a, in a new way and not, it doesn't mean, mean, mean to say that um, it has to be in, instead of or replacing. It's just an, another facet for us all to create and, and do really exciting things with. I'm wondering how you see kind of print relating to that because there are these huge debates about where the print magazine is going and, you know, what its future is and if it has a future. But, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I think... I, I don't really know what to say because I'm sort of half in that generation of adoring my folks and collecting them for ages. But then I've also grown up quite young with the internet. So I'm sort of half in the generation of half being print hot. But I think that I think it's the, it's the people that are on the internet more than the magazines. I mean, it's hard to predict what's going to happen but I mean, what's going to happen for iPads and all those things. But I think that now, when when you see of an image like, I mean, I can't personally. I can't wait to see all the ads when they come out. I can't wait to see it and and see all the editorials. I mean, I love 
I love opening a magazine and I love photographs. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, I think I really, really hope that magazines live forever and ever because I think they're, they're what's what inspired me as a child. And I don't think that it has to go anywhere or it has to, you know, like, again, it's sort of like this staunch this or that. It's sort of like, why can't it just be everything? <laughs>